five minutes of testimony. Maybe seven? <laughs> Maybe seven. <laughs> All right. Hello. Good evening. Uh, bonsoir, Chef. Good evening, colleagues. I'd first of all like to thank the chair and the members of the Senate Standing Committee on Banks, Commerce, and the Economy for allowing me to appear before you today on a subject that is of great uh, interest to me, Bill S215, an act respecting measures in relation to the financial stability of post-secondary institutions is one that uh, came uh, to be in the context of what happened to Laurentian uh, University and uh, also in terms of the CCAA Companies Creditors Arrangements Act. The, the des designated minister's uh, recommendations w would not uh, uh, allow for their having recourse uh, to, L uh, to the CCAA uh, or BIA. The um, designated minister should uh, set forth a consultation uh, amongst the, the uh, stakeholders uh, the, the proposal should deal with a federal initiative as well, where there would be legislation that would reduce the risk for post-secondary institutions, both private and public, would uh, uh, undergo, and to protect and support students, professors, employees, and the community that would be most uh, directly affected by uh, the uh, bankruptcy or uh, insolvency of uh, the university. There are legislative measures that are proposed in my bill that would provide for uh, a time frame. Uh, in a nutshell, this would oblige the government of Canada to bring about a change that would help post-secondary institutions in Canada that fall under uh, the CCAA and the BIA, so that the case of Laurentian would not just be an exception, but the rule. Okay. I would now like to provide some context for the bill. Laurentian University is the first public post-secondary institution to initiate restructuring proceedings under the CCAA. This unprecedented process has had devastating economic, cultural, and academic consequences for Northern Ontario communities, particularly the city of Sudbury. As you know, hundreds of faculty and staff at Laurentian and in three former federated universities have been put out of work. A dozen programs have been eliminated, including several in French and Indigenous programs, Ex exacerbating the existing problem of young people leaving the North and the anglicization of Francophone students due to a lack of French language program option. Why should the CCAA not be an option to address the financial situation of our public colleges and universities? To answer this question, allow me to quote the Auditor General of Ontario, Bonnie Leasing, in her report, preliminary perspective on Laurentian University. She writes, and I quote, there is a strong argument that the CCAA, an important tool used in the private sector, is an inappropriate remedy for public entities. There are certain principles held high in the public sector, including transparency, accountability, and the primacy of the public interest that make the CCAA court-ordered protection a, d a detrimental choice for public entities, end of quote. The CCAA is a legal tool that allows insolvent businesses to return to profitability for the benefit of their creditors. This is a legitimate goal in most cases. However, in the absence of clear public policy direction, this commercial pragmatism is inappropriate for the treatment of a publicly funded educational institution. Governments, and by extension, the public have a vested interest in the financial viability 
of post-secondary institutions. The CCAA does not provide any mechanism for stakeholders consulting, consultation or a requirement to take into account the mandate of the institution, the institutions involved. For all these reasons, it is inappropriate for these entities to use these legal tools. In the event of insolvency or heightened risk of insolvency, the federal government must study and consider a, differ a different restructuring process tailored to these public entities with an educational mandate. Bill, C15, C, Bill S215 provides the blueprint to achieve this objective. And I'm just going to speak on the constitutionality of the, this bill. For questions relating to the constitutionality of, the, of this bill, I'd like to refer members of the committee to the legal opinion that I tabled before this committee. I believe the document will be provided tomorrow as we encounter delays due to the translation of the legal opinion for French to English. In summary, with regards to the division of powers under the Constitution Act of 1867, the bill respects the limit of federal jurisdictions in bankruptcy and insolvency matters. The true character of Bill S215 is to establish a process for eventual legislative change by Parliament on the issue of institutional bankruptcy and insolvency. This bill does not affect this, this, the state of the law in the absence of a proposal by the minister and his approval. In this sense, it does not create a legal void and proposes a vigilant path to follow. The opinion to which I refer does, however, raise an issue with the title and short title of the bill. Titles of legislations are used by the court to determine the true character of a statute in jurisdictional constitutionality analysis. It would, be prefer prefer it would be preferable under the rules of constitutional law of constitutional law that the title and short title of the bill be amended to use language that more closely resembles the language used in bankruptcy and insolvency matters, which are clearly a federal jurisdiction. For those reasons, at the appropriate time, I will be proposing an amendment to change the current title to the following, an act respecting financial arrangement for post-secondary institution. I am available to answer any questions you may have. Thank you again for the invitation and for listening to my presentation. And I will be um, asking at some point Darius Bossé and Juliette Vanny to uh, add to some of the questions and comments that I will be providing uh, for you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, uh, Senator.